Hello, I'm Anthony Hughes, and in this video, I shall be showing you some techniques to use when creating worksheets here in Dorico, the advanced music notation software from Steinberg. This is the worksheet I shall be creating, a set of warm-up exercises devised by my daughter's excellent trumpet teacher, who has kindly agreed to let me replicate the page for the purpose of this tutorial. I'm going to start with this project that has five flows, each with a different musical exercise already input. I've been careful to name the flows how I want their titles to appear above each exercise on the worksheet. Because I am using multiple flows, it's helpful to open the Project Info dialog from the file menu here and set some information for the overall project. Let's set the title to Warm Ups, and these are all in C major. I can add the teacher's name to the composer field and her copyright information here, then press OK. Now I'm going to switch to engrave mode, and I could use the key command Control 3, that's Command 3 on Mac, and think about what master pages we need. There are a couple of options open to us here. We could delete the first master page, forcing Dorico to use only the default master page, and then adapt that for our needs. I'm actually going to undo those changes, and instead create a new master page which I'll call Worksheet. I won't base it on an existing master page, meaning it will be completely blank to start with, and press OK. I'll then insert a master page change to page 1 using this new worksheet from this page onwards. Because there are no music frame chains set up on the master page, Dorico will not be trying to draw all of the music from our five flows so we have this blank canvas to do with what we want. Let's double-click the Worksheet Master page to open it in the editor. I'll start dragging out the text frames I need at the top and bottom of the page. I'm doing this roughly because I can set the precise measurements in a moment. I'll set the paragraph styles that we need and add the tokens that will pick up the information from the Project Info dialog that we added earlier for Project Title, Project Subtitle, Project Composer, and Project Copyright. I'll set the frame constraints so that I can set the height and width as necessary. And then use the Properties panel to place the frames exactly where I would like them. I also need to set the font I'd like the text to use, which I do in the Paragraph Styles dialog found in the Engrave menu. Let's choose Default Text and set the font and size. This will then be picked up by all Paragraph Styles that inherit from the Default Text style. For example, you'll notice the Composer style has its parent set to default text, and so the Chalk Duster font we selected has filtered through to this style as well. Now, I know that I would like to also increase the size of the title style, and then I can press OK to apply the changes. The last part of the master page setup is to add the trumpet logo image, which I can do by adding a graphics frame, double-clicking it, and choosing the image file, and then placing it at the desired position. That's the layout of the master page complete, so I'll click this button to copy it to the facing page, ensuring that we see it on our layout page, and then close the master page editor. To make formatting the music frames a little easier, I have a few layout options that I would like to change. I can find the layout options dialog in setup mode, it's this button at the bottom of the Layouts panel. Or I can use the key command Control shift l that's Command-Shift-L on Mac, from anywhere in the program. Do double-check that you are changing the options for the correct layout. In the Page Setup category, 
I'll change the music frame margins to 10 points each, reducing the amount of white space padding at the top and bottom of music frames. I'll then switch to the note spacing category and uncheck this option to only justify final systems when they pass a certain threshold. And finally, in vertical spacing, I can reduce the inter-system gap down to six spaces. Now at this point we could save the project to be used as a template for future worksheets. We could use a project info dialog to change this text and we can modify the flows in setup mode and switch to another layout to edit the music. But the basic structure of the worksheets master page would be ready to use. For now I'll carry on with this worksheet. Let's switch back to engrave mode and add the frames we need for this worksheet. There are five exercises, and so we need five text frames for the headings and five music frames. Again, don't worry too much about precise positioning at the moment. Just get the basic structure down. Let's set the frame constraints for each frame. By unlocking each frame from the bottom margin, I will be able to set its height in the Properties panel. And a quick tip for you, I'm clicking the button and then using the down arrow on my keyboard to navigate to the next frame on the page. You can navigate frames in any direction using the arrow keys. Now to set the text and music content. I'll use the token Flow1 title to pick up the title from the first flow and press Control enter and that's Command enter on Mac, to confirm the text. Next, I can use the Flow filter in the first music frame to filter by Flow 1. And then I can work my way down the page, using the Flow specific tokens to pick up the correct titles for each exercise, and filtering the music frames to the correct flow. And you'll see, it's really quick to get the appropriate music displaying where we need it. Now let's position each frame precisely and consistently. I'm holding down the shift key while using the spin boxes, which first snaps and then modifies the value in increments of 10. And this way it makes it very easy to line up the frames with each other and to standardize the gaps between each exercise. That's looking pretty good. I'll just tidy the music in a couple of places. By turning off frame editing, I can now make a selection in the music and insert a system break so I can get things looking just how I want them. As you become more familiar with Dorico and the multitude of available page layout features, you will find that there are various ways to go about creating more advanced layouts such as this one and often the techniques that you will end up using will depend on the specific requirements for the project you are working on. In this video, I have shown you some of the techniques you can adopt. However, do remember that the system is flexible enough to be tailored to many different needs. If you found this video helpful, please click the thumbs up button below to let me know you've liked it, and subscribe to our Dorico channel today to see many more videos like this one. I'm Anthony Hughes. Thanks for watching.